the first word in this verse is tasmat, which uh, because it's joined, or because the next word is bharata, therefore it becomes tasmat. Tasmat means therefore. Therefore refers to the previous verses. So what has been discussed in the previous verses? Who's been in the classes regularly? Who's been in the classes regularly here? No one. You haven't been having classes? Well, um, these are actually the first words of Shukadeva Goswami that are recorded in Srimad Bhagavatam. Shukadeva, uh, he appears in the Bhagavatam at the end of the first canto. And starting from verse 1 of this chapter are the first words of Shukadev Goswami to Parikshit Maharaj. But first of all, Shukadev congratulated Parikshit for asking re- relevant questions. And then he analyzed the situation of materialistic people who are uh, blind to Atma Tattva, to the knowledge of the self. This is just a summary. And, and then, then he says, Tasma, therefore, one should hear about, chant about, and remember Hari, Bhagavan Hari. He uses three names here, Bhagavan, Hari, and Ishwar. So up to now, uh, this Shukadev has been talking about Atmata, talking in a general way that one should be interested in knowledge of the soul. But here he is, oh actually there's another name, Saravatna, four names of Bhagavan he gives here. Saravatna means super soul also, the soul of all soul. So he goes from the general platform of one should be interested in spiritual realization to the point of spiritual realization, which is Krishna consciousness. The, uh, the Mayavadis and the devotees will agree with the first four verses that are spoken here, prior to this one, that one should not be interested in material life, but one should be interested in spiritual life. One should be interested in Atma Tattva, or knowledge of the soul. But Shukadev Goswami brings us to the point that the soul of all souls, Saravatma, is Bhagavan Ishvara, who is Hari. So, of course, Parikshit Maharaj is ready to accept this. Many people would not be ready to accept that the ultimate point of self-realization is Krishna. And so, in Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami discusses in detail why Krishna is to be heard about, chanted about, and remembered if one is to be free from all fear. Parikshit Maharaj is in a fearful position. Just a short time ago, he appeared to be in an impregnable position. Impregnable means uh, invincible. He was the emperor of the world. No one could challenge his supremacy. He was protected by so many soldiers. Of course, you might think that's not very good protection. Because sometimes your own, it's been seen that sometimes the, the own, your own protecting force, that happened with Indira Gandhi, her own bodyguard, killed her. And it happened in Egypt also. Some, in Egypt, some, I don't know, 30 years ago or something, the president was inspecting the troops and then one of them just picked up his gun and shot him dead. So uh, I suppose Indira Gandhi thought she was uh, well protected. Parikshit Maharaj, he must have seemed in a very secure position. But all of a sudden, he finds he doesn't have any kingdom. He has to, he has to give it up. He has to die. And Shukadev Goswami, uh, he talks about the Asat Sanya in the in the verse uh, previous to this. Atma, yeah. He talks about uh, Atma. Atma Sanyeshva Vasatsvapi. The Asat Sanya means the fallible soldiers. Yeah. Our soldiers cannot protect us. Most people don't have soldiers to protect them. Yeah. You have to be a big shot to have soldiers protecting you. When the ministers come to any place, they 
they are surrounded by so many police, armed police to protect them. But Shukadev Goswami has given the example that people think that their families are protecting them, but they cannot protect you at the time of death. Srila Prabhupada several times gave, uh, actually nothing can protect you. That uh, one man, he was very rich and he, he called, he was dying and he called the doctor and he said, give me, give me a few years of my life, give me four years more, I have so many plans I have to finish and I'll give you half of my estate. He was worth crores of rupees. The doctor replied that I cannot give you a moment more than is destined for you. So this uh, Shukadev Goswami has said that the, the soldiers or the family members or by implication doctors or anyone else, they cannot protect the Atma, the soul. Because everyone identifies the Atma as the body, then therefore everyone is fearful because the body is sure to die. So therefore Shukadev Goswami says we should take shelter of the Supreme Atma by hearing about Him, by chanting about Him, and by remembering Him. And therefore in this way we can be fearless. Uh, and in this way he told Parikshit Maharaj that if you have any remaining attachment for your wife, home, family, kingdom, that will, impl that will be the cause of fear. If one is attached to the body, then one feels fear. One can only become fearless when one is detached from the body, and specifically when one is attached to Hari. Hari means a thief, it means one who takes away. So it could be ter interpreted as a thief. but. Of course, in the case of Bhagavan, Hari means one who takes away all the bad things. So one of Bhagavan's name is Bhaya Hari, one who takes away fear. One of my god-brothers, his name is Bhaya Hari. So he's Bhaya Hari, he's Chitta Hari. He, he steals our mind from all the material uh, thoughts. So this kind of thief is very good. We, we pray to Bhagavan, please take away all the contamination within my heart. That will be affected by hearing about, chanting about, and remembering Hari, Bhagavan. Shinvatam Sakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtanaha Vidyantas Tohya Bhadrani Vidhunoti Suhrit Satam one that's already stated in the first canto, that uh, hearing about Krishna is pious activity, hearing and chanting. And those who hear and chant about Bhagavan, the effect is that Bhagavan, who is the well-wisher of his devotees, clears the, or cleans the dirt in the heart for those who sincerely hear and chant about it. So, Shukadev Goswami is telling Parikshit Maharaj, he's focusing him on the actual point. Parikshit Maharaj, prior to uh, Shukadev Goswami's entrance, Parikshit, he had asked so many rishis the same question. But Shukadev Goswami, he was the right person to give the proper answers. Now, we may say, well, why didn't Shukadev Goswami immediately go to all the uh, intimate pastimes of Krishna? I mean, he described so many things. In this chapter, he'll be describing the universal form of the Lord and meditation upon that. And then in the chapter after that, he'll be describing the Lord within the heart. So there are various reasons that Shukadev, he didn't immediately go up to Krishna's Vrindavan pastimes, which are the essence of all Krishna conscious topics, or all spiritual topics. One reason is that there were many people present who are not as qualified as Parikshit Maharaj to hear all these topics. It, uh, they all respected Shukadev Goswami, but they were coming with a different outlook. Various persons, mostly on the platform of Jnana, they're, in, they're interested in spiritual knowledge, but without understanding that Vasudeva Param Jnanam, 
Vasudev Krishna is himself the supreme knowledge and he is the object of knowledge. So Naishkamyam Apyachuta Bhava Vajitam Nashobate Gyanam Alangni Ranjanam Kutapana Shashvada Padramishvare Kuvatarat and all that so anyway. Uh, later on in this oh no that's already gone in the first canto that even if one is on the situated on the platform of knowledge beyond fruitive work if there's no feeling for Krishna it's not very nice so uh, even though everyone respected Shukadev they might have a they might find it difficult to accept everything he was saying unless it was presented to them point by point that can happen even uh, even among gurus and disciples. This uh, Srila Prabhupada himself said, he, he related one incident in this regard, that uh, once Srila Prabhupada was in Mayapur at Sri Chaitanya Mat, the headquarters of Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur's movement, and one snake came out. So usually uh, if a snake comes and people kill it, poisonous snake, but the devotees, they weren't sure what to do because, you know, devotees are peaceful, non-violent, and they don't cause harm to others. So Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur came and he saw that they were hesitating. He said, kill it. The Srila Prabhupada described that he was surprised to hear that. He thought, well, how can a sadhu uh, tell to kill some creature? So Srila Prabhupada said that he had some doubt. That means he didn't think that his guru was not a pure devotee or, but he could, at the same time he couldn't understand this point how could a pure devotee uh, recommend such a violent act well you might we could postulate that he could have asked his guru but it seems he didn't but Srila Prabhupada described that when he was reading through the Bhagavatam he came across one verse in which the killing of Hiranyakashipu by Nrishimhadev is described and uh, how all the demigods and Prahlad, his own son, were happy of that. Someone has been killed and everyone is saying, great, wonderful. So you'd think that anyone who say, see, they see someone being killed and they're happy, you'd think, well, that's a very bad person. And you think the killer is a very bad person. But Prahlad says, Modeta sadarapi vris, uh, what is that? Modeta sadarapi vrishchika sarpahatya. Uh, he said that even a sadhu is pleased when a snake or a scorpion is killed. Modeta sadarapi vrishchika sarpahatya. So when Prabhupada read this, he thought, oh, you see, even a, even a, even a sadhu is pleased when a snake is killed. All right, so his doubt was clear. That is practical because uh, a snake is uh, poisonous and envious and just may bite someone at any time, so it's better that it's killed. But the point here is that even someone who's a, a, a devotee or disciple surrendered to their guru, they may have doubts about what he says. So what to speak of persons who are uh, not devotees and they're hearing Shukadev Goswami speak, about the glories of Bhagavan and the glories of Bhakti. So here, Shukadev Goswami has immediately come to the point of Bhakti, of glorifying Bhagavan. But we can imagine that many of the persons present, they'll think, wait a minute, how is that? We can't accept that. Or they might theoretically accept it, but at the same time harbor doubts. So uh, in the course of this massive work, Shukadev Goswami will explain why Bhagavan, Ishvara, Hari, who is the soul of all souls, he is to be heard about, glorified and remembered by one who desires to be free from all fear. That's not so much for the benefit of Parikshit Maharaj as for the benefit of others who were hearing. Although Parikshit, he must have also been very happy to hear the glories of Bhakti. But for the future also, so many persons after this recitation by Shukadev, uh, they can be benefited by the message of Bhagavatam, which describes the uh, why Krishna is to be heard about, remembered and glorified at all times. So this will be discussed at length in the rest of the Bhagavatam. It's already been discussed, many important points already made in the first canto of Bhagavatam. 
Um, and it's natural, even though everything is stated very clearly and very nicely, still uh, persons may have doubts. So therefore, Bhagavatam is not simply to be read, but it's also supposed to be heard and discussed. So if anyone has any doubts or they're not really sure about any point, then they can ask the speaker, who uh, is supposed, you know, uh, preferably quite learned in the matter of the Bhagavad philosophy, and who can uh, clear up doubts by referring to the message of Bhagavata. So, having said that, if any of you have any doubts or any points that you'd like to be cleared up, please ask them now. Time for questions. We are basically not qualified to preach Srimad Bhagavatam, so how we can preach? Well, it's a matter of doing the best you can. Just like in the, uh, in a war situation, when it's desperate, they send even children to fight. Or even the injured men, they're also fighting. So it's better to get trained up properly as a good soldier. But in the absence of that, then uh, we have to do what we can and Krishna will help us. Srila Prabhupada spread Krishna conscious all over the world with uh, devotees who knew very little about it because they're all new devotees. When I joined the movement, someone who had been in the movement for four years was considered very senior. We didn't have Chaitanya Charitamrita. Okay. Only one chapter had been published. It was in 1975. And the Bhagavatam, I believe it was up to the fourth canto, had been published. And our, even the most senior devotees, they, they, don't, they didn't know nearly so much as the senior devotees know now, because you know, they had only been in the movement a short time. But still, uh, a lot of preaching was going on, and many people were joining the movement. There was a lot of emphasis on uh, distributing Srila Prabhupada's books, so, if you feel yourself incapable to preach, well, let Prabhupada do the preaching, distribute his books. And uh, Hari, a lot of Harinam also, going out on Sankirtan. So, these Harinam and book distribution can be done. Uh, you, you don't have to be a great pundit. Anyone can do this if they have some faith. And ultimately, it's not simply a matter of knowing so many things, and therefore people will become convinced. That is required if we are to preach, we should know something. Obviously you have to know something. If you come up and, and say, well, Krishna is supreme. And someone will say, why do you say that? You say, well, I don't know. But you, it's not going to, it won't be very convincing. So we should know why we accept Krishna is supreme. Anyway, we'll discuss about Sri Lanka exactly a little later among ourselves. You translate that? Yeah. So many what? So many incidents. So many incidents. Yeah. Well, there's so many incidents in every yuga. You mean disturbances? The incidences are every yuga. Incident just means something happens. That's all. Devotees go to Maya and then everyone becomes surprised. Yeah. Translate that? Well, it's surprising to you because you're fairly new. And you haven't seen many go away. But it's not very surprising to me because, you know, I've been in this con 33 years and, you know, they say there's 33 crore demigods, so I've seen, you know, quite a number of devotees go away. Actually, when Srila Prabhupada was first preaching in the West and some devotee left, it, you could see Prabhupada's reaction in the beginning was like, you know, was, all the devotees were very much affected by that. But gradually, uh, you know, more people joined, and among those that joined, many didn't stay. So that eventually Prabhupada said, don't be surprised if anyone leaves, be surprised if anyone stays. It seems impossible, or inconceivable, that someone who's so nice, someone's very nicely engaged in Krishna's service, and then they just go away. Well, it just goes to show, Maya is very strong. Who will decide this? I think it's Satishna, so decide? Who will decide? Translate it? Well, what do you think? Do you think Krishna is saying, okay, now you stop, now you, <laughs> now you stop doing bhakti? Krishna doesn't say that. It's our own misuse of our independence. Anything else? Anything? All right, then we'll finish there. And Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Srimad Bhagavatam Gita. Hare Krishna.